Hi, thanks. Um, you, you touched on the notion earlier about surveillance in a, in, in a great way, um, but also the, uh, with the relation to the idea of social surveillance, um, which is an issue that we have to deal with as well because there's so little social interaction in the street um, these days. But going back to your um, tapioca, the last project you showed, so now that everyone's moved in there, how are the people responding to being so close to each other? And, and obviously, you would imagine there would be an enormous amount of social control there. <laughs> you do a lot of passing. <laughs> <laughs> if it's too difficult. <laughs> uh, actually, the space uh, between the two units uh, actually, is, it, is it not uh, less than the space in the next door. So next, uh, that building is, 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 is very uh, tightly located. So the, the usually what happened is that, um, that I, uh, I should have pointed out more uh, clearly in the, the context photos. Uh, what happened is that, that they uh, put the windows there, but then they, um, as soon as they, they put windows because it's so close to next building, they have to put the, the screen uh, to cover the privacy. So, I'm the other way around. That's right. yeah. So, how much interaction is there between that's right, the people yeah. and the street? Right, right, yeah. So, so the, the, our um, our strategy is that uh, instead of doing that, we uh, the, it, it, it keep the space between the units, uh, not in a facing to the next building, but between the units, so that they can at least they can have uh, the privacy um, by uh, the or the. Um, by placing uh, the windows uh, strategically, so that they can have a uh, at least a, yeah. Direct, I guess, the, yeah. Because it's an active choice rather than being forced into. Right. Right. Yeah. But I, I think there's also um, there, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Maybe it's not not for everyone, but what's what what we should have said about this project? It's it's an artist. Um, there, there's going to be artists in residences living living there. Uh, because just like any other big city, artists are being forced to move out of the city because it's so expensive. And Seoul is no exception. It's so expensive to live there. Um, so, so there's a common interest. Um, they're there, and and they're they're kind of in residency, and they're all artists. And there's there's a line at the door to get into this place. I mean, so many people want to move in um, because it's kind of a shared interest thing. So our goal for the next version of it, I think you brought up a really great question, is how to then have it when it's not just artists. What if there's you know professional living and what if there's a different kind of person living? And how, how do you how do you make that space so one can choose? I mean, the idea that tapioca is there, one can choose to retreat into their um, little space, or uh, there's an ambiguous semi-public where you can choose the way you can share. Mm -hmm. So this is what it's it's not resolved, but this is what we're trying to work on. Just on that same issue, is that something specific about uh, the, the, the culture? I mean, I look at those sections and the high windows, and the, I think most Australians would go crazy mm -hmm. without being able to to, to look out to live in a box with high level windows. That's right. To clear the windows, um, it's it it could be a cultural thing. Um, that there are you know there 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 are some windows, but but. Uh, um, the immediacy of the outdoors is right there. You can just walk right outside and onto onto a terrace. That's that's that could be a, you could have two terraces on each side of the unit. So instead of the window, you can actually just go outside immediately. The other thing too is all the the the, mid, the micro theater and the gallery spaces. Those are all meant to be living rooms for the, for the building itself. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah. That's right. So the, the, it's a kind of a you know it's, it, we're sort of we didn't explain it correctly. I think they're they're not just cells. Um, the whole building works as one community, so you can go downstairs and... and Which in itself is a, for us, would be a social experiment. It, it <laughs> might be a social experiment. <laughs> it, 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 it would be. And, that, and, and by the way, um, we actually, uh, uh, you know, we were working with the client and we suggested um, go to the smallest unit possible by law. You can't do a unit smaller than this legally. Um, because we could have actually up begin to occupy these zones and maybe it's slightly bigger. And, and it was so, sort of an exercise on what happens when you make it that small, um, but then you maximize the zoning envelope. You actually get these residual spaces. So the residual spaces, we're trying to argue, they actually add value. It's not just 
the fact that you're living in a, in a small space, um, it's areas around it that have value. Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> but wouldn't um, these people you know, who are consulting not living in a unit, they'd be living in the city and they go there to sleep and you know, clean their teeth and change their clothes. You know? mm -hmm. So it's not, you can't, it's not a cultural thing, it's almost like living in a city that size. You know? That's right, yeah, they're already in the city, exactly yeah. right, and everything's around them. Yeah. With the cloud, uh, uh, that's my hearing song. The whispering was in English. Is that in Korean as well as English? Uh, it was. We should have done it in, in, in Korean. We should have done bilingual. Um, there was a friend of mine that that wrote this poem about, uh, uh, you know, like like the words are about excess and and melting snow and this kind of thing. It, it's really supposed to be like this ominous story about the the, the environment. Um, and so I, I just recited it. I, I, I'm, I actually did the narration for that in the soundtrack. Um, so they're hearing me whispering. <laughs> <laughs> but it was hard to translate it. Yeah, the big <laughs> <laughs> Is the cloud solar powered? Uh, that we know. We wish. We tried to. We tried to do that. Um, the the um, the. The uh, controller for it actually is very, very low wattage because it's all LEDs. We were amazed at how small it was. It's like a, yeah, the power supply is like a little iMac kind of thing. So it's low power, but it needs to be solar powered, yes. Did the moving lights send messages across to North Korea? <laughs> That's part of it. It's a great idea. See, I told you you guys would be great at working internationally. <laughs> We've got time for probably one more question. Is that okay? Does anybody have a good one? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all good. Thanks. Um, so, in the project, when you had the chance, you always seem to take a fairly strong scale of response, like your 16 foot or 16 foot tower, and then those uh, tapioca projects and the eight towers. Um, when you get to, I guess, that urban sprawl and it mentions, is that something you want, like your tapioca project as a type? Try and move those ideas into suburbia. Mm -hmm. Oh, we go to suburbia. I mean, the way like our own trees and that's right. How yeah. they're growing, like Brisbane, for example, the CBD bounded by like a ring suburbia. of suburb suburbia. Yeah. yeah. So at some point, something's got to give. So do you see the Tapio project as a type to move into suburbia, or is it? In the, in the lower the density area. I think that's was so good to it that people are wanting to move in there. So that's right. Really that's right. But the, the, the gentleman in the middle there, you, you brought up a good point. That the project th thrives because it's also surrounded by other urban stuff around it. Mm -hmm. and, and even though it's it's an incubator in and of itself, you can also just walk down the street and go to yeah. great restaurants everywhere. Um, we, we're, uh, you know, we we work in this. The the most suburban we've gotten is that is that house, the Bra the Graver House, which was in a pre-war um, suburb where the lots are still pretty small and dense. Uh, we haven't done that. Larger. But um, I don't know if this is the right answer. But um, the idea of uh, this the micro housing uh, is not the uh, this the only to provide this minimum um, living space. Uh, but there, so we wanted to uh, make this, this, this space um, that the people can um, expand uh, their living space uh, depending on their needs. So for instance, if one person, we, we have one of the floor, they have two units um, that the, the, the client wants to rent that to the, the couple. So the wife use one space and the husband use the other, uh, and they meet in the, in the corridor. Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> the bridge <laughs> or so. <laughs> so uh, for and then they uh, break up. They can you know easily close <laughs> 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 <from> the door. <laughs> so uh, there is the um, the um, the, uh, the the plan that the it, this. Um, the people can um, the the get the more units um, to so that the the it's not like you have to move out of uh, where you live because you need a bigger space. Um, 
there's so the the um, depending on the, the the stage of the the, the your life, um, the, the your family size gets expanded, it gets larger or it gets smaller. Uh, but the, with the the system uh, could provide this, uh, the the solution that the, the the one person can live um, in one place in even longer, uh, so that the the community becomes more um, sustainable in that way. So that the idea uh, can be applied in the in the lower density area uh, with the, the same logic, uh, I think.